joining the CHS, and I am Peyton Palmer, your host for this week's Bearcat News. I know what you're all thinking. Where is that odd but friendly face we're used to seeing? Well, let's just say the students have finally prevailed. In other matters, we have so many clubs and organizations on this campus that they're all feeling the Christmas spirit. Let's see some of the events they're partaking in. Hi, I'm Molly Baker. Here at Coleman, the baseball and softball teams have always had a rivalry. This Christmas season, they had the chance to prove who's better, once and for all, with their canned food drive. So how many cans have you collected so far? I would have to say it would be in the thousands, maybe, maybe even hundreds of thousands. Um, they're coming in nonstop, so we're, we're really excited about this. So what is your goal amount? Uh, our goal amount, hey, can somebody let him in, please? Coach, I got these for you. Oh man, thank you. The baseball team appreciates it. it thank no you. It means a lot to us. It, you know, it's almost nonstop every day we're getting deliveries. We're really excited about this. Uh, what was the question? The goal amount? Yes. Basically, our goal amount is anything that beats the softball team. So, the softball team plus one, maybe? Sounds like a great goal. So, last question, Coach. Will you wear the shirt if the team loses? You know, I don't ever even want to think about losing. Um, the shirt, you know, we made an agreement, and as long as they don't mind if we put some rhinestones on it and maybe make it into like a halter type, type deal, cut the arms out, cut the sleeves out, I guess I would have to, but that's not the plan. The plan is to look at them wearing our shirts. Absolutely. So how much have you collected? So far we've collected about 200 cans. What is your goal amount? I think we'd like to collect around 500, but as long as it's more than baseball, we'll be totally happy with that. Will you wear the shirt if your team loses? Yes, I'll wear the shirt, but I don't plan on it. I'm sure Coach Patterson will have to be wearing the shirt. So what are you doing to help collect cans? Uh, we are going around houses, collecting money and canned foods, and just trying to get as many canned foods as possible. Awesome. Are you prepared to wear the shirt? I'm not prepared to wear the shirt because we're not going to lose. Okay, stupid question, but which team is better? Of course, the baseball team is much better than the softball team is. What are you doing to help collect cans for your team? Um, we're really encouraging each um, student at Coleman High School to get involved and just help out for this good cause. Are you prepared to wear the shirt? Um, of course not, because we're going to win. Okay, I know this is a stupid question, but which is the better team? Um, softball, no doubt. Hi, this is Liz Tankersley here with Ms. McCutcheon, and we're here talking today about the Shoebox Project. And what is the Shoebox Project? The Shoebox Project is a project sponsored by Spanish Club and Spanish National Honor Society, where we take um, shoe boxes or Tupperware boxes, and uh, we fill them with different hygienic items and toys, and we send them over to Guatemala. Who participates in the project? Um, well, it is sponsored by Spanish clubs, but um, so that means my classes participate, but anyone in the school is encouraged to participate in this project. Well, how did you get involved? Um, actually, I was involved in the same project as a member of Spanish club in high school. What does a regular shoebox contain? Okay, well, um, a shoebox contains, um, well, first of all, it's wrapped on the outside or a decorative box in wrapping paper. The lid has to be separate from the box so that it can go through customs quickly. Uh, the most important thing is a hygienic item, soap, deodorant, toothpaste, and then something fun for the kids so that um, they can also have fun with their box. Um, things that you don't want to include are candy, even hard candy or any type of food. Um, and also, if you can, we're asking for a $5 donation. That's how much it costs to ship a box to Guatemala. Uh, but if that is not something that you can do, well, we don't want that to hinder you from bringing the box in. Well, do you have a set goal for this year? We do. Um, I would like to reach 100 boxes. And we beat that goal last year. We haven't met it yet. Um, I believe we sent 180 boxes last year, and I'm hoping for 
Um, definitely 100, but if the school could get involved, maybe 200. Well, thank you. And if you have time, drop by our room. The deadline to turn in the box is December 11th, and you can always pick up a sheet and help out. Once again, this has been Liz Tankersley reporting with Ms. McCutcheon. Hi, I am Kyron Timmons and I am the FBLA president here at Coleman High School. Coleman High School sponsors our FBLA and Coach Drake is our teacher sponsor. FBLA is Future Business Leaders of America. We compete nationally and locally in business competitions. We attend leadership seminars and we also give back to our community here in Coleman, Alabama. In Coleman, Alabama right now, we are doing the gifts, CHS Gifts for Kids. CHS Gifts for Kids is a project that the FBLA is running for special victims here in Coleman, Alabama at the Harbor House. Um, as you see, this Christmas tree has ornaments on it that represent presents. Each present is for a certain child that ranges in age. As you can see, all you do is take off the ornament. And as you can see here, this child is a girl, she's age five, and all she wants is some finger paint. student would purchase this gift and bring it back to Coach Drake unwrapped in the next two weeks. This tree will be here for the next two weeks during lunchtime, so all you have to do is come back, pick one off, and sign off with one of the FBLA members. The FBLA officers will then deliver each gift to Victim Services, aka Harper House, a week before Christmas, so that each child can have a wonderful Christmas. Merry Christmas, CHS. The Drama Department will be performing the Christmas Carol on November 30th and December 1st. Let's take a look at all the things that go on behind the scenes.
past two weeks, Santa took some time off from making toys and playing with the elves to take a quick visit to Coleman High School and ask some of our students what they would like for Christmas. Let's see what they had to say. Hey, I'm Santa, and uh, I'm going to see what people want for, for uh, Christmas this year at Coleman High School. Phelps, Phelps, can we get an interview with you? So what do you want for Christmas, Phelps? What do you want for Christmas? You don't want to, do you, do you play Black Ops? Good, do you play Black Ops? Black Ops 2? Uh, I want to go to the Saints and Cowboys game. What do you expect to see there? The Saints win. <laughs> Is that it? Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders. Exactly. Uh, I want a new Chevrolet. That's V91 nice. One truck. That's that's nice. It's uh, six, uh, lifted, lifted. <laughs> Crazy? Why? <laughs> I'm not Santa Claus. I'm sure you are. I'm just dressed like you're one. Wearing, you're wearing the stuff. You're, yeah, you're Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's like Nick. He's gonna buy me a new truck. I'd like a new truck. Is that it? Pretty much. I don't know. I'm looking for an extended cab. Maybe a diesel. I'm a two door. Maybe. I don't know. Four wheel drive. Yes. Um. I guess if I could get anything, I would like a vehicle. But that happen. What kind of vehicle? Um, probably a truck. Just something right around him. What kind of truck? Um, I don't guess it might. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess it's something getting from point A to point B. Um, un carro, un perrito, un pit bull. Oh, me gusta este Pitbull. Este es un bien canción. Sí. Sí, me gusta mucho. A new vehicle. That's right. He had just recently wrecked his car. Dude, that was like seven months ago. Nah, that was recent. I would either like a new creative way to run my soccer team into the ground. That would be a miracle. Or, or, Tony, lifetime supply of the Estadas. Fiestadas. 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 I want peace in the Coleman area. World peace. We like world peace here at Coleman High School. Everyone loves, loves, and happiness all around. Thank you. one person who thinks they look good on camera, but truth be told, they don't. I mean, Jackson Hoagland. Um, but anyways, Jackson Hoagland, everybody, with Berkeley Bob's interview. Good morning, I'm here with Berkeley Bob from uh, Berkeley Bob's Coffee House in uh, Coleman, Alabama, and he's gonna tell us a little bit about himself, about Berkeley Bob's, and even running a small business. So tell us, how did you get into coffee? Well, it's a kind of a long story. Uh, I'm from California, and in California, every town has a coffee house, and it's just a part of the culture. And everybody, when they're growing up, at some time or other, go in a coffee house, meet people, uh, drink some coffee or drink a Coke, whatever they want. And it's just part of the community atmosphere in a lot of towns, not just in California, but in other parts of the country. And uh, so I've always kind of, wherever I've traveled, and I've been all over the country working and, and whatever, I always look for a coffee house, a place to, to go and get some good coffee, maybe hear some music. And, and uh, usually they're fun places where you can meet folks that uh, are kind of like the same as you. And so when I came to Coleman, uh, I realized that there wasn't a coffee house here. And to me, uh, that was kind of sad because it's such a, uh, an important part of, I think, a community. And so when I retired and uh, had the time, uh, I decided to open Burger Bob's. And this coming January 23rd, that'll be 10 years ago. 
I understand that you didn't have really any experience with coffee except, I guess, drinking it before you opened uh, Birth of Bob. What was it like to, to open a new business? It was a real challenge. My degree from Berkeley was in forestry. Uh, I've worked in the woods all my life. All my life, I love working in the woods. Uh, forestry, sustainable forestry, is a big part of uh, who I am and what I've always done. And when I retired, I, I really had to find something else to do. And I've always liked coffee, and I've always had this kind of thought in the back of my mind that I'd like to own a coffee house. And so, when the opportunity came, I, I did that. I understand you have a favorite drink here. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, uh, our most popular drink is the Milky Way. That's a latte. A latte is a, it's got an espresso base, real intense coffee comes out of the espresso machine. Uh, it's got flavors. Now, Milky Way latte will have caramel, vanilla, and chocolate, but our other lattes will have different flavors. And then it's uh, topped with milk that we steam to uh, maybe 160 to 180 degrees, and it's served with whipped cream on top. Uh, we mentioned this earlier, but our relationship with Coleman High School has uh, has always been really good from the first. Actually, from almost the first day I opened, I would say the first week I opened, the drama club started coming in here. And they have been regular attendees of Berkeley Bob since I opened up. And so I really appreciate what you guys do there. Well, we appreciate that, uh, that recognition. Yeah. So well, thanks said, a lot, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. With the always optimistic, always holding the door open, and always singing, John Weeks, everyone, with the Cross Country's amazing experience at State. The Cross Country season ended last month after sectionals on November 2nd and the State meet on November 10th. Each event was divided into a boys race and a girls race. Both the boys and the girls ran a course that was 3.1 miles in length, involving hills, switchbacks, and any other source of pain you could ask for. I'm John Weeks, part of the Coleman Cross Country team. How does anyone agree to doing this? The answer is, we have actually grown a bit of a liking for this pain called running. But there's a lot more to it than that. In our guys race for sectionals, Nicholas Fillinger finished third in the entire Section 4 5A with a time of 17.27 on a course that was probably a little longer than usual. Marissa Franklin finished sixth for the girls with a time of 22.33. Every race is a complete drain of every ounce of energy in the runner's body. By the time they are on the last leg, every runner feels as though they have been running for forever. Of course, there is always due time for celebration after the race is over. Something that I find interesting about cross country is that Ultimately, it is a team sport. Although running seems like something people do individually, it is the fastest five finishers on the team that contribute to the team score. Not only that, but everyone on the team acts and moves as one spirit, with every member adding a little bit of their own selves. Some are accredited with continuing the cross-country tradition. Some show off their unique personalities and a whole lot of people do a whole lot of both. At the state meet for the guys, Nicholas Fillinger again turned out first for the team with a better time of 1711. That is three miles at five minutes and 30 seconds a mile. Nicholas was awarded with the honor of being named an all-state cross-country member for his 13th place finish. Other top finishers for the guys were Devin Hall, Mark Gomez, Stephen McNeil, and Jesse Burroughs. For the girls, Marissa Franklin finished a solid 36th place with a time of 21.37. All five girls were under a time of 22.30. Spectacular for a girls team. Other top finishers were Megan Penley, Anna Bailey, Savannah Smith, and Hillary Crane. The best part about cross country is the people. Not just the athletes, but the parents who come out to support and the coaches who lead us the entire way. There is a spirit of joy that comes out of every athlete and every parent figure 
that make running fun and enjoyable. We are blessed to have one another for those days that we don't feel as though we can run any farther, as well as for those times of celebration that come after we have finished our race. From the Bearcat News Network and the Coleman Cross Country Team, this is John Weeks. Coach Meyer, the basketball coach here today. So, what are you expecting from this team this year? We have high expectations. We've put in a lot of work over the, the offseason. We've got kids who have uh, played varsity for two to three years. And uh, so, we have high expectations of, of winning our area and uh, hosting an area tournament, getting back to Wallace for a regional, and uh, hopefully beyond that. Who do you most want to play this season? Well, of course, our big Rival is always Hartsville, so the Hartsville game is always huge, but we have other big games also, Walkers on the schedule. Uh, we're really looking forward to a new tournament that we're hosting this year down at Wallace State. Uh, it's called the Yuletide Classic, and we've got teams from Tennessee and Georgia coming in, along with other top teams from around the state, so it's going to be an exciting tournament. And how did y'all do in this um, Thanksgiving tournament? Thanksgiving tournament, we won our first two games, and the final day we were beaten uh, in close game by West Point by three points. Uh, the boys played really well, and uh, you know, we're looking forward to beating those guys again. Does it make a difference uh, that the ball players are coming in now? Does that make any kind of difference? It does. Uh, Houston, Turner, and Troy Forest are returning stars, and they have a lot of varsity experience. And so that will give us a big boost, and uh, we're looking forward to getting them back into the fold. Are there any other candidates that we should be looking out for? Yeah, uh, in addition to the uh, tournament we're hosting, before Christmas we're going to Sevierville, Tennessee and play a Christmas tournament there in Pigeon Forge. And uh, we'll play a team out of Kentucky, the first game, Knox County High School out of Kentucky. So that's going to be exciting, uh, playing those teams that you don't see often. And then also in January, we're going to be playing at the Birmingham Jefferson Civic Center uh, on January 12th. We'll play Briarwood there. So, our schedule is, is really great. Uh, it's going to be some exciting games for the fans to consider. Okay. And what have y'all done to prepare in the offseason? Well, offseason we'll do our usual workout program, our conditioning program. Uh, we also have a shooting program. We stress to our, our guys to shoot at least 10,000 shots in the offseason. And uh, most of them can carry that out. So we'll see a big difference in how we shoot. Hopefully our strength and conditioning also. Oh, well, that's good. Thank you so much. I'm having the hall here with Coach Meyer. See you later. So what did you expect from our team this year? A lot of effort. Um, you know, graduating four seniors last year, uh, we had some girls step up and fill their spots that were on the team last year. But, uh, you know, there's question marks, I guess. Um, but uh, very much looking forward to this year. So did last year really raise the bar for this year's girls? Um, I just think it, it added to the – of what we're trying to build I think girls basketball here. Um, it doesn't necessarily put any more pressure on anybody, um, but it or raise the bar, but it sets a precedence for what the team did last year, what they accomplished, setting those records, um, pushes the, the hopefully will push the previous years, not necessarily put pressure, but push them to to maintain the status of, of what we're trying to do. So would you say this is um, really more of a building year or more of a, I guess, I don't know, sort of be the dominating year? I don't know. No, I see what you're saying. I mean, definitely. And again, when you graduate four seniors, you need but you, you have to replace them. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people consider that to be a, re a rebuilding year. But again, we're starting, um, I guess, four seniors. Uh, and, and Bailey's uh, Johnson, our point guard, is a 10th grader. Um, so we're starting four seniors. Okay, well, who do you look forward to playing in this year? <laughs> you always have the Walkers and the, uh, the Hartzels, you know, the big rivalries that have been around with Pullman for so long. Um, but I really, I don't, I don't care too much. I guess whoever, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm excited about going to Tennessee and seeing some new folks, new teams. Um, we're playing, we added Muscle Shoals to the, to the uh, uh, schedule this year. I'm, I'm excited to see them play. I, you know, we've never played Muscle Shoals. Well, thank you so much. I'm Hadley Hall here with Coach Hayes. See you later. Here is a time we all wish we were in the band. 
so we can miss school. I mean, so we can take trips. This year, the band went to Chicago, where they marched to the parade and even met Star. All right, hold it. We're doing this, Peyton. We're gonna forget about everything else. We're gonna show my awesome video, Farm City, grown safely, extra tasty. I want everybody to know we do have one of the safest food sources in the whole entire world. U.S. farmers, uh, they go to great lengths to ensure that uh, the things that you eat, you purchase and eat, are healthy for you. And they are dedicated to providing you with the healthiest, most nutritious food that, that they possibly can. It's up to our farmers to ensure from, from the farm to the fork that all, you know, all the things they're producing are healthy and nutritious. And actually, the, the U.S. beef industry spends over a half uh, a million dollars, uh, excuse me, $500 million a year on, on uh, safety, investigations, uh, research, you know, to try to, to reduce, you know, E. coli and, and other foodborne illness. been a lot of things uh, in the media that addresses uh, uh, food safety and concerns. You know, you, you hear news stories about E. coli outbreaks, uh, you hear catchphrases like pink slime and mad cow disease. Um, a lot of these, you know, certain groups, they'll catch hold of these things and, and they'll try to, they'll use scare ta tactics to uh, try to get across their agenda. Things like manure management, uh, quality water sources, to ensuring that uh, that water and that they're using to irrigate their crops and fertilizers that they're using uh, are all safe. You know, so they have to be diligent about uh, maintaining uh, high standards, and they're going to do that because uh, it's their livelihood. Round, pretty, tasty too. It's just so, so tasty. And it tastes, uh, it tastes sweet. Isn't it good? Mmm, mm -hmm. they're just tasty. Extra tasty. Extra tasty. Extra tasty. Extra tasty.